ever wondered what it feels like to walk through a city frozen in time? Then welcome to Toledo, Spain's hidden gem, where every corner tells a story and every stone whispers secrets of the past. Our tour for today starts right here, in a quaint hotel, overlooking the old town of Toledo. So stick around as we dive into the enchanting beauty, gripping history, and undeniable charm of this ancient city. And trust me, you don't want to miss this. Imagine a place where Romans, Visigoths, Muslims, Jews, and Christians have all left their mark. That's Toledo for you. Perched high above the Tagus River, this city has been a strategic fortress and a cultural melting pot for over 2,000 years. But why is Toledo so special? Well, stick around and let us find out together. Before we dive into the enchanting beauty and gripping history of Toledo, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon. It does not cost you anything, but it helps the YouTube algorithm push our video to a wider audience and allows this video to reach out to more and more people out there. Nestled in a bend of the River Tagus, Toledo is known as the city of the three cultures for the cultural influences of Christians, Muslims, and Jews throughout its history. We are not currently in the old town yet, but we stopped here to show you the views of the city and of its surroundings. You will not find any modern buildings in Toledo, let alone high-rise blocks. From 542 to 725 CE, Toledo was the capital of the Visigothic Kingdom and hosted the councils of Toledo. It has been the seat of a powerful archdiocese and is known for its Gothic cathedral. And the city also has a long tradition of producing bladed weapons, now popular souvenirs. We will feature several of these souvenir shops in the later part of this video, as we wander through the old town. But perhaps, most important of all, was that in 1986, 38 years ago, UNESCO declared Toledo a World Heritage Site for its rich monumental and cultural heritage. This is the Alcazar of Toledo and it is a stunning stone fortress perched on the highest point of the city. Originally built as a Roman palace in the 3rd century, the Alcazar has served various roles, including a royal residence, a military academy, and a key defensive stronghold. Today, it houses the Army Museum, showcasing Spain's military history. In the 16th century, under Emperor Charles V, it was reconstructed to become an impressive Renaissance palace. Its symmetrical design, grand courtyards, and robust towers are a testament to this era's architectural ingenuity. We are now already in the old city, and we found a parking space, near the Alcazar. Beyond its historical and military significance, the Alcazar is an architectural marvel. Its imposing stone walls, elegant courtyards, and commanding towers make it a must-visit landmark in Toledo. You must have noticed that I am walking around, carrying an umbrella. Well, it has been raining non-stop since this morning. And since we are at the beginning of the month of January, it is quite normal to expect some occasional showers. We walked the facade of the Alcazar, that runs along Calle de la Union and made a left turn at the far end corner, to continue towards the Museum of Santa Cruz. Toledo isn't just a city, it's an experience. Walking through its narrow, winding streets feels like stepping into a time machine. To reach the museum, we have to go down a series of steps, that lead into an alley full of small restaurants and shops. The mix of Gothic, Muda, Renaissance, and Baroque architecture is a visual feast. And just look at these streets. Can you feel the history beneath your feet? Toledo's beauty lies in its details. Check out the stunning craftsmanship on these doors and windows. Each one has a story. The blend of different styles and influences here is a testament to the city's diverse past. 
and the best way to get a glimpse of a city's history is to visit one of its museums. The Museum of Santa Cruz, located in the heart of Toledo, is one of Spain's most important museums, offering a rich collection of art and historical artifacts. Housed in a former hospital that dates back to the early 16th century, the building itself is an architectural gem, showcasing a blend of late Gothic and early Renaissance styles. The museum's name comes from its original function as the Hospital de Santa Cruz, established by Cardinal Mendoza to care for the city's sick and poor. The museum's collection is divided into three main sections, archaeology, fine arts, and decorative arts. As we entered through the main gate, we found ourselves in the first section, also known as the Fine Arts section. The Fine Arts collection is a highlight of the museum, featuring an impressive array of paintings and sculptures from the 16th to the 19th centuries. One of the most notable collections includes works by El Greco, the famous Renaissance painter who spent much of his life in Toledo. Visitors can admire some of his masterpieces, which capture the unique spiritual and artistic atmosphere of the city. And since we are here, let me share a bit about Toledo's history. Toledo, called Toledum in Latin, was once described as a small city but well protected by its location. Around 193 BCE, a Roman general named Marcus Fulvius Nobilia fought and defeated Celtic tribes near Toledo. Toledo became part of the Roman Empire. This meant its leaders got Roman citizenship and started using Roman laws. The Romans built important things in Toledo like city walls, public baths, and a big circus for events that could hold up to 15,000 people. During the late Roman times and into the early Middle Ages, Toledo grew in importance. People built big houses inside and near the city, showing how wealthy and powerful it was becoming. The city also hosted church meetings, called councils, where important religious matters were discussed. In late antiquity, around the 6th century, Toledo was the capital of the Visigoth Kingdom, a group who ruled parts of Spain. Their kings made laws and held important meetings there. The city was also a religious center, with the Bishop of Toledo becoming the top bishop in all of Spain. In the early 700s, Toledo fell to Muslim forces during their conquest of Spain. The Visigoth nobles were removed from power, and the city's structure changed a lot under Muslim rule. This marked a major shift in Toledo's history, from Roman and Visigothic rule to Muslim control. During the Middle Ages, Toledo, under Islamic rule, saw diverse groups of people settling there. The city kept its importance as a center for learning and religion until the mid-8th century. The church in Toledo was particularly influential during this time. Leaving the fine arts section of the museum, we find ourselves in the courtyard of the building. And this appears to be the second section of Santa Cruz Museum, the archaeology section. Here, nestled around this green and lush garden, we can find on display, artifacts and archaeological finds from various periods of Toledo's history, including Roman, Visigothic, and Moorish periods. The courtyard setting allows visitors to explore these exhibits in a spacious and atmospheric environment, often surrounded by the historical architecture of the museum itself. The museum's layout allows visitors to navigate through these sections in a coherent manner, often guided by clear signage and pathways that connect the different areas. Additionally, the architectural features of the building, such as the grand staircase and the beautiful cloister, serve as central landmarks to help orient visitors as they explore the museum's extensive collections. The last section of the museum, referred to as the decorative arts section, houses a diverse collection of ceramics, textiles, religious artifacts, and other decorative objects that highlight Toledo's rich cultural heritage and the various artistic influences over the centuries. The collection includes ceramics spanning different periods and styles, reflecting Toledo's historical role as a center of ceramic production.
and these pieces often feature intricate designs, vibrant colors, and techniques that were influenced by Islamic, Moorish, and Spanish traditions. Toledo has a renowned tradition of metalwork, particularly in the production of swords and armor during the medieval period. The collection also includes furniture pieces and woodwork that exemplify Toledo's woodworking traditions. And these items often showcase intricate carvings, elegant designs, and the craftsmanship that flourished under various cultural influences. As we walked around, there are sections that encompass a wide range of other decorative objects, including glassware, pottery, and everyday items that provide a glimpse into daily life in Toledo across different historical periods. The museum also boasts a notable balcony that overlooks the cloister, which serves as a central hub within the museum, offering visitors a serene space to explore and appreciate the architectural beauty of Toledo's Renaissance period. Over the centuries, the building has undergone several renovations and restorations to preserve its architectural integrity and historical significance. To commemorate the 50th anniversary of Pablo Picasso's death in 2023, the Friends Association of the Museum of Santa Cruz organized a special exhibition featuring the artwork of Roberto Campos in the museum's galleries. In this exhibition titled Sweet P50, visitors will have the opportunity to view around 30 large-scale artworks, as well as graphic works created from an intriguing project Campos undertook throughout each of the 365 days of 2022. These works were recorded in a five-sized notebooks, with double-sided pages, the originals of which are also displayed in the exhibition. After nearly a decade without exhibitions, Roberto Campos returns to present his work in Santa Cruz, staying true to his colorful style characterized by patterns of red and blue stripes interspersed with white, and his distinctive geometric and architectural strokes forming the basis of his paintings. Furthermore, Roberto Campos shares a special connection with Pablo Picasso, the Malaga-born painter who passed away 50 years ago. Many of the artworks displayed in this exhibition include multiple references to Picasso. This Sweet P50 exhibition was specifically created for this occasion. As you will see throughout this video, the city of Toledo absolutely brims with historical landmarks and is renowned for its wonderful festivals that date back centuries. And there is a lot that you can see by just exploring this beautiful city on foot. And since you will be doing a lot of walking and going up hills and downhills, and if like us, you do not do very well in hot temperature, then we really recommend that you visit Toledo during the cooler months. We went a bit extreme and decided to visit in January, but if you do not want the rain to ruin your day out in the city, then the best time of the year to visit would be during the spring months, April and May. Toledo is a relatively small city, if you compare it to Madrid and Barcelona, and it covers an area of less than 250 square kilometers. As for its population, if I am not wrong, it stands around 85,000 people. But the city's historical significance and cultural heritage make it a popular destination, contributing to a vibrant community that blends locals and tourists. The most popular way to reach Toledo is by taking a high-speed train from Madrid. Toledo's train station is located about 2 kilometers from the city center. You can take a taxi, bus, or a leisurely walk to reach the historic center from the station. We left the museum and continued to walk towards the other interesting sites of the city. But before that, remember I told you earlier during this video about souvenir shops that sell armors and swords? Well, here is one of them, so let us go inside and have a look. This tradition of crafting high-quality swords, armor, and other bladed weapons dates back to the Roman times and flourished particularly during the medieval period. Toledo's artisans use traditional forging techniques combined with modern methods to produce high-quality pieces. 
The statue of Miguel de Cervantes is a tribute to one of Spain's most illustrious literary figures. Right behind the statue is the Ark of Blood, which marks the entrance of Plaza de Zocodova. The origin of the Ark of Blood is not entirely clear but adds a layer of intrigue and historical depth. Going through the Ark will bring you directly to the main square and a central gathering place in Toledo. This historic plaza has been a focal point of the city's social, economic, and cultural life for centuries. The name Zocodova is derived from Arabic and it means market of the beasts of burden. Throughout the medieval era, the plaza served as Toledo's main marketplace, where goods from all over the region were traded. It was a bustling hub of activity, integral to the city's economy. Nowadays the plaza is surrounded by shops, cafes, and restaurants, offering visitors a variety of local products, souvenirs, and dining options. It's a great place to relax and soak in the atmosphere of the city. From the plaza, you can easily embark on a walking tour of Toledo's historic center, and it is also a nice place from where to start your tour. We left the plaza, and we walked deeper into the historic town, in the direction of the Cathedral Primada. There are several notable and incredible architectural wonders in the city of Toledo. However, the cathedral is definitely one of my favorites and one of the most beautiful attractions in the city. More commonly referred to as the Toledo Cathedral, it is probably one of the most significant and impressive Gothic structures in the entire of Spain. The Toledo Cathedral was built on the site of a former Visigothic church, which was later converted into a mosque during the Islamic rule of Toledo. The construction of the current cathedral began in 1226 under King Ferdinand III and was completed in 1493. There is a section of the cathedral that can be accessed free of charge, and this is exactly where we are now. The cathedral serves as the seat of the Archdiocese of Toledo, making it the primary cathedral of Spain and a major religious center. The high altar is a masterpiece of Gothic art, adorned with detailed sculptures depicting scenes from the life of Christ. Even the chapter house is richly decorated with frescoes and portraits of the archbishops of Toledo, and its ceiling is adorned with wooden carvings. To visit the entire cathedral, there is another entrance, and there is also an entrance fee. We will leave it to you to discover during your next trip to Toledo. This is one of Toledo's most cherished cultural landmarks. Rojas Theatre has been a center for performing arts and cultural activities since its inception. Nearby this is another notable historical building. And this charming structure, which once served as an inn, has a rich history and offers visitors a glimpse into the past. From this point onwards, we decided to ditch our Google map and just venture deeper and deeper into the historic center of Toledo. The rich tapestry of history, culture, and architecture makes this town one of the most fascinating cities in the country. As I told you earlier, Toledo's history dates back to the Bronze Age, but it was during the Roman period that the city began to gain prominence. Toledo then became the capital of the Visigothic Kingdom. It remained so until the early 8th century, playing a crucial role in the political and religious affairs of the time. And following the conquest in 711, Toledo became a vibrant cultural and intellectual hub under Islamic rule. Now move forward to 1805, King Alfonso VI reconquered Toledo. This marked the beginning of its transformation into a Christian kingdom while maintaining its diverse cultural heritage. The city continued to be a center for translation and knowledge transfer, particularly with the establishment of the School of Translators of Toledo, which translated many significant Arabic and Hebrew texts into Latin and Castilian. Let us stop here for a while, at this Christmas market. And since it was not yet January 6th, Christmas season was not yet officially over in Spain. The celebration of the Three Kings, also known as Epiphany, marks the culmination of the Christmas season. It commemorates the biblical story of the three wise men visiting the infant Jesus, bearing gifts. 
The Christmas market was just in front of Toledo City Hall, and right across was the Toledo Cathedral. The City Hall is the administrative center and seat of government for the city of Toledo. Surrounded by elegant buildings on all sides, the market creates a festive atmosphere with colorful decorations, twinkling lights, and Christmas music playing in the background. The stalls at the market are adorned with traditional Christmas decorations, including garlands, wreaths, and ornaments. Here, you can find a variety of seasonal treats and delicacies such as roasted chestnuts, churros, hot chocolate, and traditional Spanish sweets like nougat and shortbread. And like I mentioned, just across the market, is another facade of the Toledo Cathedral, and seen from this angle, the view is perhaps the most impressive and truly spectacular. Its towering spires, intricate facade, and majestic presence dominate the skyline of Toledo. While my husband was busy admiring the architecture of the cathedral, I had found something else to admire at the market. There was a range of handmade crafts and gifts, including ceramics, jewelry, textiles, and artisanal products. It's a great place to find unique souvenirs or gifts for loved ones. We have to come back again, later at night, as I was not yet done shopping, and I wanted to see the Christmas lights illumination. It's a pity that it was still raining, and in fact, it has been raining since our last episode, when we were in Cordoba. We hope that you have enjoyed the enchanting city of Cordoba, as we wandered through the narrow streets of the historic Jewish quarter, marveled at the stunning architecture of its cathedral, and delved into the city's vibrant culinary scene. Just to make sure that you do not miss it, I will leave a link to it in the description section below. For now, follow us, as we walk through the historic city of Toledo, and let us discover together, the secrets of this magnificent town. One thing you must have noticed by watching this video, is that Toledo's architecture blends medieval and renaissance styles, creating a picturesque mosaic of stone facades, intricate wrought iron balconies, and elaborate carvings. Time for a coffee and cakes short break. But stick around, I have lots more to show you. The buildings, often made of golden limestone, shimmer softly under the rain, highlighting their age-old elegance. And the winding streets of Toledo, barely wide enough for a car, meander up and down the hills. Cobbled stones, slick with rain, reflect the soft glow of street lamps and the rare and faint flashes of lightning, casting long, mysterious shadows. Overhanging balconies, adorned with pots of geraniums and trailing ivy, drip with rainwater, creating a gentle patter that harmonizes with the soft murmur of distant church bells. We took this small and narrow alley, that led downhill. And this part of town was slightly less crowded, and this path would take us directly to the church of Santo Tomé. The church dates back to the 12th century when it was originally built as a mosque during the Islamic rule of Toledo. After the Christian reconquest, it was converted into a church dedicated to St. Thomas. The facade of Santo Tomé is modest yet elegant, with its simple brickwork and horseshoe arches. It blends harmoniously with the surrounding medieval streetscape of Toledo. The path from the church kept leading downhill, and we walked past several small restaurants. These restaurants featured cozy interiors with wooden beams, tiled floors, and intimate seating arrangements. And the atmosphere was warm and inviting, perfect for a relaxing meal after exploring the church and its surroundings. Nearby, there were also several other souvenir shops, showcasing replicas of historical swords, knives, and decorative blades crafted by skilled artisans using traditional methods. Toledo's economy is diverse and primarily driven by sectors such as tourism, industry, agriculture, and services. Tourism is a significant pillar of Toledo's economy, drawing visitors from around the world to explore its rich cultural and historical heritage. The city's UNESCO World Heritage status and its wealth of medieval architecture, including landmarks like the Toledo Cathedral and Alcazar Fortress, contribute heavily to its appeal. 
The tourism sector supports a range of businesses including hotels, restaurants, souvenir shops, tour operators, and cultural institutions. Besides tourism, Toledo has a notable manufacturing sector, particularly known for its production of steel, metalwork, and ceramics. The automotive industry is also significant, with several companies engaged in automotive parts manufacturing and assembly plants located in the surrounding region. And the fertile lands surrounding Toledo support agriculture, with crops such as olives, cereals, grapes for wine production, and almonds being cultivated. We are now at the synagogue of Santa Maria la Blanca, which was built in the late 12th century, and originally served Toledo's Jewish community during the medieval period when Jews, Christians, and Muslims coexisted in Toledo. The synagogue is open to visitors as a museum and cultural center. Visitors can explore its serene interior, admire the architectural details, and learn about its rich history through exhibitions and guided tours. Further down the road is the Monastery of St. John of the Kings, and it was commissioned by King Ferdinand II of Aragon to commemorate their victory at the Battle of Toro in 1476 and to serve as a royal mausoleum. The highlight of the monastery is its beautiful cloister, featuring a double tier of arches supported by elegant columns. The upper level is decorated with finely detailed reliefs depicting scenes from the Passion of Christ and the life of St. John the Evangelist. The monastery was intended as a burial place for Ferdinand and Isabella, though they are actually buried in Granada. Nevertheless, it remains a symbol of their royal power and devotion. Next to the monastery is the School of Art of Toledo, and it serves as a hub for artistic learning, creativity, and cultural preservation in the historic city, by offering diverse programs and engaging with the local community. In fact, Toledo has a rich artistic tradition dating back centuries, influenced by its multicultural history and renowned for its craftsmanship in areas such as ceramics, metalwork, and painting. The school offers a range of programs and courses in disciplines such as fine arts, graphic design, interior design, fashion design, and decorative arts. Students receive technical instruction and practical training, preparing them for careers in the creative industries or further academic pursuits. If you want to visit the Monastery of St. John of the Kings, the entrance is located next to the School of Art, and there is a general admission fee of €4. Euros. But we did not go inside. Instead we walked further up to the front of the impressive Gothic facade of the monastery, to a plaza known as Plaza of St. John of the Kings. And just to be clear, we are still in the heart of Toledo's old town, and it is a really special spot here. So come, and follow me, let me show you around. The plaza takes its name from the monastery, which was commissioned in the late 15th century. The highlight of the plaza is undoubtedly the stunning facade of the monastery of St. John of the Kings. The facade itself is adorned with intricate reliefs, Gothic tracery, and the coat of arms of the Catholic monarchs. If you look at the details close enough, you will realize that it reflects the artistic trends of the late 15th century when it was constructed. Delicate Gothic tracery patterns embellish the windows and arches, adding a sense of lightness and grace to the overall composition. Further down this road is one of the old gates to the city of Toledo. Stay with us, as we will walk there in a bit. The central feature of the monastery's facade is its grand portal, framed by multiple arches and decorated with sculpted figures and biblical scenes. Every corner and surface of the facade is meticulously crafted, showcasing the skill of the artisans who worked on it during the period. Since we were still celebrating Christmas in Toledo, there was a giant Christmas tree set up in the plaza. From the plaza, you can enjoy elevated views of parts of the town, providing visitors with a perspective that overlooks the surrounding areas. It has now stopped raining, and it would be perfect to walk towards the perimeter walls of the city of Toledo and try to enjoy the sweeping views from there. Opposite the road from the plaza, 
stands the Palacio de la Cava and it is associated with the noble Maqueda family, one of the prominent families in Toledo. The palace is steeped in legends and historical events, including connections to the famous story of La Cava and King Roderick, which is part of Spanish folklore. According to the tale, La Cava was the daughter of Count Julian, whose supposed dishonor by King Roderick led her father to invite the Moors to invade Spain, resulting in the fall of the Visigothic kingdom. Visitors to Toledo can explore the exterior of the palace and its surrounding area, delving into the history and legends associated with the building. Straight ahead is one of the historic gates in the city of Toledo. Known as Puerta del Cambrón. this gate dates back to Roman times. As with many of Toledo's gates, Puerta del Cambrón was originally designed for defensive purposes. It features robust towers and thick walls, providing a formidable entrance to the city. The gate is flanked by two robust square towers that add to its imposing presence. These towers were part of the original fortifications and were designed to enhance the gate's defensive capabilities. The gate is a popular spot for photography, offering picturesque views and a glimpse into Toledo's historical architecture. Standing just outside Puerta del Cambrón, Visitors are treated to a panoramic views that includes the surrounding countryside and the river as well as the bridges, which lies just outside the old city walls of Toledo. The view encompasses the natural beauty of the surrounding landscape, including fields and greenery that provide a serene backdrop to the historic buildings. Depending on the season, the landscape around can change dramatically, offering lush green views in spring and summer, and more subdued, earthy tones in autumn and winter. We walked parallel to the city walls, along what is known as Paseo de Recorredo, named after a Visigothic king famous for converting to Catholicism in the late 6th century, which had a significant impact on the religious landscape of Spain. And here again, we were greeted with panoramic views of the surrounding countryside and the Tagus River, which encircles the city. These views are particularly stunning at sunset when the warm light casts a golden hue over the landscape. Perhaps one of the most prominent landmark that is visible from the Paseo is the San Martin Bridge. This is a medieval stone bridge that spans the Tagus River and it is one of the city's most iconic landmarks. The bridge is made of stone and features five main arches that span the river. The central arch is particularly impressive with a span of about 40 meters, making it one of the largest in the Gothic period. At each end of the bridge, there are fortified towers that were originally built to protect the bridge and control access to the city. These towers add to the medieval charm of the structure. The bridge is associated with various local legends, including a tale about its construction. According to one legend, the bridge's central arch was built thanks to the ingenuity of an architect's wife, who cleverly averted a potential collapse. Since it would soon start to get dark, we decided to walk back towards the Christmas market and the areas nearer to Toledo Cathedral. And sadly, that meant walking back uphill. Although the slopes were not steep, the slippery paths as well as fatigue made it more challenging on that particular day. We must have been walking for hours now, and we were clearly starting to feel tired and hungry, and these uphill slopes were not making it any easier for us. But luckily though, Toledo is an amazing city, and at every corner of every road there was something to look at. This is the Medina Palace, associated with the House of the Androdas. Nearby is the Convent of San Jose. It is well preserved and continues to function as a religious community, offering visitors a glimpse into the contemplative life of Carmelite nuns. While access to certain areas of the convent may be restricted due to its active religious function, visitors can often tour parts of the convent, including the chapel and specific rooms dedicated to St. Teresa. From the convent, we had to choose between two paths leading uphill, and we picked the one on the right. And for some reason, there were cars and vans, driving along those impossibly narrow cobbled paths. It was now starting to get darker and although we could not see the sun, due to the cloudy weather on that day, the buildings around us appeared to be bathed in a yellowish light. 
This is similar to the golden lights you see at sunset, but a lot more faint. Along the way, we stopped by to admire several of these buildings, but mostly and honestly, we stopped just to catch our breath. We were now properly exhausted. Even the iPhone camera appeared exhausted. But our little adventure was far from over. And we have a lot of interesting things to show to you. So let us take a deep breath, and let's go. This interesting building you see is known as the Convent of the Conceptionist Nuns, and it was founded in the early 16th century. The convent was supported by various noble families in Toledo and became a spiritual center for the city's elite women who chose the religious life. It has housed generations of nuns dedicated to prayer, contemplation, and community service. We were now closer to the northern side of the historic town and we had to make our way towards the Toledo Cathedral which is located right in the center of the old town. Along the way we will pass by several prominent landmarks in Toledo, and one of them is the Church of San Ildefonso. Built as a Baroque church, between the 17th and 18th centuries by the Jesuit order, it was dedicated to San Ildefonso, the patron saint of Toledo. The plaza it is located at, is named after a Spanish Jesuit historian and writer, and this is the statue of Padre Juan de Mariana, and right behind him you can see the majestic tower of the Toledo Cathedral. The Church of San Ildefonso is a must-visit for its architectural beauty, historical significance, and breathtaking views of Toledo. It stands as a testament to the artistic and religious fervor of the Baroque period in Spain. We came across this interesting souvenir shop, along the way. As we continue our way towards the church, here is a little secret for you. Did you know there's a hidden synagogue beneath the streets of Toledo? Discovered accidentally during construction work, this secret synagogue is believed to date back to the medieval period, when Jews practiced their faith in secrecy due to persecution. And beneath the bustling city, these hidden chambers tell a silent story of resilience and faith. We are now back at the Christmas market in front of the Toledo Cathedral, and at night, with all the twinkling lights, decorations, and the crowd, it felt like we were teleported right back to Christmas Eve. The historic plaza, already brimming with charm, becomes even more enchanting under the glow of countless twinkling lights, illuminating the stalls and casting a warm, inviting glow over the entire area. Strings of lights crisscross above, creating a canopy of sparkling stars. The market stalls are brimming with handmade crafts, and local artisans showcase their talents, offering unique gifts and souvenirs. And their stalls selling hot chocolate, mulled wine, and other warm beverages, making them popular stops. The historic buildings, including the impressive city hall, are beautifully lit, highlighting their architectural details and adding to the festive atmosphere. Wreaths, garlands, and festive ornaments adorn every corner. The market is a hub of activity and a gathering place for locals and tourists alike. And friends and families come together to celebrate, creating a warm and communal atmosphere. For me, the highlight was the enchanting views of the majestic city hall. That serves as a stunning backdrop. And the view of the nearby Toledo Cathedral, also illuminated at night, adding to the scenic beauty, and making the market an even more enchanting place to be. Puddles reflect the twinkling lights and vibrant colors of the market stalls, creating a dreamy, mirror-like effect on the ground that enhances the festive charm. The earlier shower left the cobblestone streets glistening under the lights. Here is a little secret about the Toledo Cathedral. Within the majestic Toledo Cathedral, there is a hidden alchemist's laboratory, long forgotten by time. Rumored to have been used by medieval alchemists, this secret chamber was where they conducted mysterious experiments in search of the Philosopher's Stone. So, can you imagine the ancient secrets that still linger in its walls? We are now making our way towards the Zokodovit Square. The shops lining the alleys are a mix of traditional and modern, with windows full of colorful displays. The earlier rain has left the cobblestones glistening under the festive lights. 
The windows are still decorated with festive themes, drawing in shoppers with their warm, inviting displays. The historic buildings along the alleys are beautifully lit, highlighting their architectural details and adding to the charm. Toledo is a very old town, and the city hides a few secrets, like the hidden synagogue beneath Toledo streets and the hidden alchemist's lab in Toledo Cathedral. We are now at the Zocodova Square and this place too, holds a secret. And since you have been watching our video for 40 minutes now, let me share it with you. The square, now a lively market square, was once the site of chilling witch trials. In the 16th century, accused witches were brought here for public trials and executions, casting a dark shadow over its history. Today, the square is filled with laughter and commerce, but the eerie echoes of its past can still be felt. We are now back at the Alcazar of Toledo, and it was already late in the night, and we were so exhausted that we could hardly walk straight. The Alcazar greeted us, majestically illuminated against the night sky, with its imposing towers and sturdy walls, bathed in a soft, golden light that highlights its architectural splendor. We drove to another parking space, away from the old town, to admire the Alcazar from afar and then we drove further away, along the hillsides, to admire the town itself. We also stopped by one of the most significant and picturesque bridges in Toledo, and it is known as the Puente de Alcantara. It connects the historic town with the eastern part of the city and it is primarily built from stone, showcasing the durable and robust engineering techniques of its time. Here is another thing. Scattered throughout Toledo are mysterious stone faces carved into the walls of old buildings. Their origins and purposes remain unknown, sparking numerous theories from ancient warding symbols to secret society markers. We reached our hotel and it was time to hit the bed. But before we end this video, let us show you the views of Toledo, from afar. And first up, this is the view of the historic town, from our very own hotel room, at sunrise. And now let us drive further out, along the hillsides and show you the views, while we give you a conclusion to this amazing town. And while you enjoy the breathtaking views, we want to thank you for joining us on this unforgettable journey through Toledo, a city where history, culture, and beauty converge in every corner. Imagine strolling through the glistening cobblestone alleys, alive with festive lights and the aroma of roasted chestnuts. And picture the majestic silhouette of the old town from afar, a sight that has inspired countless artists and continues to leave visitors in awe. But here's the best part. We've only scratched the surface of Toledo's secrets and treasures. And there's so much more to explore, from hidden alleys and historic convents to vibrant markets and panoramic vistas. So, subscribe and stay tuned for our next adventure as we delve deeper into the heart of Spain where more adventures await, and it's more enchanting than you could ever imagine. See you in the next episode.